Hello, everybody, and welcome to our 15 Minutes in the Cloud, Data Privacy versus Governance versus Security. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, I'm Thomas Rivera, and uh, I have a partner here, Eric Hibbard. So uh, I am um, working for VMware Carbon Black and um, uh, heavily involved in a lot of the uh, standards uh, that re relate to cybersecurity and privacy, and uh, glad to be with all of you today. I'll give Eric a chance to introduce himself. Thanks, Thomas. Yeah, I'm Eric Hibbert, and I'm with uh, Samsung Semiconductor. Also somebody who's involved with uh, a variety of standardization activities in, in ISO and uh, in, in IEEE, and uh, have been a long-term security professional and uh, uh, recently moved into the privacy space as well. Great. Wonderful, thank you that intro so what we'll do is we're going to talk about obviously like we mentioned at the beginning this uh whole world of governments governance privacy and security what we'll do is we'll, we'll sort of use a what we like to call a bubble chart eric's going to talk first and then i'll talk a little bit uh once eric's is done uh regarding governance and uh then we'll wrap it up since we only have 15 minutes so uh before we start though a little bit of a, a quick legal notice Obviously, this is copyrighted material. Um, our lawyers force us to put this slide in here, but you guys can read it um, at, at your leisure. And uh, I'll, at this point, I'll turn it over to Eric. Okay, so this is gonna be the whirlwind tour, um, but the idea here is to um, try to differentiate between some of these various terms that uh, get bandied about about on a regular basis. So let me start with the uh, left-hand side of this, this diagram. And um, what you see is privacy. Um, and, and privacy is really, uh, it, its basis tends to be in uh, the legal and regulatory space um, as opposed to technology. Although there are things, technologies are associated with privacy. So you're worried about things like collection limitations, uh, data quality, um, the purposes and use limitations and, and what kind of security safeguards, that's where there's a bit of a dependency on, on sort of the security side of the house. Um, openness, individual participations, and obviously accountability. So those are, those are sort of core tenets or principles when you look at, uh, you know, at privacy. Now related to privacy, we'll see personal data protection. And in many cases, for example, in Europe, um, they don't necessarily use the term privacy, but they'll they'll talk about data protection mechanisms. So this is you know safeguards that that um, address specific laws and regulations um, around personal data. Uh, personal data absolutely varies by jurisdiction. Jurisdiction could could actually you know be a region like Europe, could be a country, um, could be a state, for example, in the U.S. Um, might even be a locale, um, so it, it will it, it can vary significantly as to what needs to be protected. Uh, in addition, there there may be uh, specific requirements in terms of of minimum protections or specific technologies that need to be used. So um, think of this as the the privacy angle is uh, you know the sort of the higher level you know what what you're having to deal with if you um, sort of wander outside of those general principles, you're, you're likely to encounter some problems, and they may not be explicitly addressed by the regulations, whereas the, the data protection piece does tend to be aligned with uh, um, sort of minimum requirements, if you will. On the right-hand side, we see inf information security and cybersecurity. So information security is, is very broad. And, and it's really, it hails back to, to essentially three tenets, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And it's not restricted to the digital domain. So paper is still a thing. And um, this, this issue uh, is uh, important to note because it's, it's the broader scope, all right? And so it covers things like, you know, employee training and in and, and a really, really wide range of activities. On the other hand, cybersecurity also concerned with, with confidentiality, integrity, and availability, but it's focused on, on data. And, and you'll see that from a cybersecurity perspective, 
There's also a focus on things like identifying, protecting, detecting, responding, and recovering uh, with regard to, to data and um, events and incidents. So something, something bad has happened or you know something has happened and, and you need to basically deal with these. Um, so, and then at the bottom, um, we, have, we have ethics. And, and it, we, we, we show in, in at least this slide that uh, ethics is all encompassing. The way I like to characterize it in this context is ethics you know, looks at the problem of, you know, should we, you know, can we do something? And, and a lot of, of engineers uh, and, and techie types are really focused on, can we do this? How do we do this? But ethics plays more into, um, you know, should we do this? And what are the implications? So if you've actually enabled a certain kind of technology, have you thought through, for example, the privacy and security uh, considerations that, that really need to be factored into, um, into this space? Um, ethics uh, is often cultural or jurisdictional sort of norms and can vary significantly. And what one example I, I, I like, to, like to give is if you're talking to many of the uh, people in, in Europe, privacy um, to them is um, like gun rights to a Texan. So it's, it's, it's part of their core, it's part of their fundamental. A lot of their ethics will, will in fact be you know, influenced by those kinds of things. So the, um, the, the, the bubble chart here is, is basically intended to show you that um, these things are not uh, the same. They, they, um, there, there is overlap, um, but when you look at privacy versus information security, the, the, you know, that overlap is not massive. There, there are many, many different things. So for example, privacy is not focused on, uh, sorry, information security is not focused on privacy. However, privacy is hard to achieve without some measure of, of security, information security as well as cybersecurity. It's also worth noting that you know, the privacy and the data protection side tends to be heavily regulated. Uh, that can vary by jurisdiction. Um, and so in, in the world where you're dealing with both privacy and, and security, uh, many of the privacy elements will, will tend to get uh, a bit more attention because there, there are regulatory consequences for, for not dealing with it appropriate. So that sort of sets the, uh, hopefully the, a, a bit of background for you in terms of what are these things? How do they interplay? There are many, many standards that deal with various aspects of this with possible exception of ethics, um, but the others come into play. We are seeing, for example, in the case of ethics, um, artificial intelligence, this is an area where, where there, there is some discussion about you know, the principles of, uh, of, of ethics there. So with that, I will stop and, and let Thomas um, talk a bit about how governance sort of plays into this uh, sort of broader scheme. Yeah, thanks, Eric. And so governance, although it's not on this bubble chart that you're seeing here, it plays into all of this in a, a little bit of an orthogonal way. And that is, you know, when we talk about governance, you know, broadly speaking, um, for example, one of the common definitions of governance is you know, basically a system of controlling and a system of directing. And really what, what governance has to do with is much more than just compliance of specific regulations uh, that may be in place based on either your vertical market that you're in as a corporation or um, compliance uh, or, and, and or regulations um, that might be specific from for a ge geographic region, uh, for a state or a country, uh, for example, the EU, the European Union, for example, has things like GDPR. So it, it's sort of an all-encompassing um, framework that allows a company to make sure they're doing the right things, not just from a compliance, from a regulation perspective, Aspect, but also doing the right things for the company, which may not be 
uh, tied to any regulation at all. So, um, what we like to talk about, especially in the world of uh, governance from a principles perspective, there's really six principles uh, that that are used to define what a company needs to do and, and the aspects of IT that you need to deal with. So because you have all these factors coming out at, at you, you know, you have the factors of um, business issues, you have the, fa uh, the factors of things like uh, the regulations and, and other business related things and um, issues of making sure you're doing the right things for your shareholders. What we do is within the world of governance, you know, we use these guiding principles, if you will. So there, there's a set of six principles. These are actually used in an, uh, an ISO standard uh, that uh, outlines these principles. These six principles are the following. It starts with responsibility, strategy, acquisition, performance, conformance, and then human behavior. So these six principles are different um, lenses, if you will, of mm -hmm. dealing with the controlling of um, your organization uh, to make sure that you're not only conforming to specific regulations and compliance issues for certain vertical markets, but also doing right for the company. And that could be shareholders, it could be making sure that from an ethics perspective, all the right things are being done. So. You know, taking the principles very quickly one by one, you know, responsibility, obviously you want to, you're making sure you're doing the right things and you're having the roles and responsibilities appropriately attributed to the right people within your organization to make sure that from an IT perspective, you're doing the right things. Strategy, obviously you're going to work on the strategy and making sure that you are doing all the right things from an IT perspective across the organization to accommodate everything that your organization needs. And then the next one from a governance perspective uh, in the world of uh, principles is acquisition. So you wanna make sure that you're doing the appropriate acquisition from an IT perspective um, for all of the different things that you have to worry about, all the ways from privacy to security, and the list goes on. Uh, next one uh, from a principal perspective is performance. So you gotta make sure that Again, from an IP, IT perspective, the, the overall IT infrastructure is performant. And then uh, tying into that performance for all the different things that you have to deal with uh, to make sure the organization, organization can function appropriately. Um, the fifth one was conformance. So making sure that mm -hmm. you're not only conforming, like I said before, to the, to the legal aspects, but also to the other aspects of uh, doing the right things uh, you might have, for example, uh, the the need to conform uh, to specific, let's say, um, uh, issues of uh, securing data and then retaining data for a certain period of time and then disposing of that data at the appropriate time when it's no longer needed. That may actually fall outside of the uh, typical regulations uh, that you might be um, uh, dealing with based on your organization, but it's still important to the company itself. So those are always factors to to follow. And lastly, the human behavior, which is the last principle, uh, sort of obvious, but you know the making sure that the employees are doing the right things and behaving appropriately to um, properly uh, conform to everything that you have to do from a governance perspective. So I'll leave it there and. Um, uh, if you have questions, we can answer those in a blog post afterwards. And uh, if you're interested in, in any of the topics that we've covered here, because it's actually sort of a, a broad ranging list of topics, uh, we are having an upcoming storage security summit. It actually uh, is coming in May, specifically on May 11th. It's a complete virtual summit. Um, and uh, feel free to register for that event. We'll be talking about a lot of the uh, topics that we covered today. Uh, so feel free to register. Uh, it should be a, a pretty good event, actually. We're looking forward to it. Uh, we also would like to thank you for watching today. Please do rate the um, this particular webcast so that we can make sure we're doing the right things and we can continue to do better and better. We put a couple of links in here for, for additional um, 
resources uh, from our educational library within SNEA. So feel free to check those out. And also just wanted to say thank you for joining. And uh, I'm sure Eric uh, would like to say thank you as well. Yes, thank you. And uh, we look forward to maybe seeing you at the, the upcoming Story Security Summit. Great. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon.